Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this celestial wire work ring. Now this is a great addition to previous pieces I've made, I'm going to have a playlist with all my celestial themed designs in the description box down below, otherwise if you want to learn how you can make it, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need, now the wire that I'm using is a regular round wire and I'm using both a silver coated and a copper wire, of course you can mix your colours however you want to. And the first gauge here is a 0.8mm which is going to be the base wire for the ring band, I've got a 0.4mm which will be the weaving wire for the ring band and both of these are silver in my case and finally I'm also using a 0.4 mil in copper. To add some sparkle I'm going to be using the 6 mm rose monte and the tools we'll need is first of all some flush cutters so we can cut our wire, tweezer nose pliers to help manipulate the wire, 6 step bell making pliers to make loops with and of course a ring mandle so we can get the right size and shape. So these tools and materials will be linked in the description box below the video otherwise let's get it all ready and let's get started. Then we need some lengths of our wire so I have two lengths of our 0.8 mil of about 15 centimeters each one length of a 0.4mm of about 50 centimeters, and this is the copper one in my case. And the silver 0.4mm I'm leaving attached to the reel so we have minimum wastage, and this is what I'm going to use for the ring band. So I'm going to start making the ring band, so I'm grabbing my two base wires here and just start with one of them. Then grab the length of 0.4mm that's still attached to the reel in my case, put the 0.4mm behind the base wire and go towards one end, just have that little tail to hold on to. And just make sure you leave a little bit of length on the base wire as well. Now wrap the weaving wire around the base wire once to attach it and then straight away bring in the other base wire, lay that as the new top one and then go over the top of both of them with the weaving wire, come up between the two so we can wrap around that top one by itself and then just make sure the wraps are nice and tight and that is one full round of the weave. So to repeat I'm going around the bottom one by itself, go over the top of both of them, up between the two so I can wrap around the top one by itself and come down behind and again make sure the wraps are tight. And this is a diagonal wire weave, it's my personal favourite but you can easily use another wire weave that uses two base wires. I have a whole playlist full of different weaves you can have a look at, I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below, otherwise you just want to continue with your weave until you have the length you need for the ring band. So now I have the length that I need and just a tip on how to know how much you need to weave is you get your ring mandrel and then you can just grab a piece of scrap wire and then you just want to wrap the wire around the ring mandrel on the size that you need and then you just want to make sure that where the wire meets up there's going to be a bit of a gap so we don't want it to completely meet up with itself but just leave a bit of a gap and then put a bend into it take it back off, straighten it out and you can then use this as your guide to how much you need to weave and just keep comparing it. But I'm then going to cut off the excess of the weaving wire here, like that. Then we can shape this. So grab your ring mandrel, place it on there, and then just start bringing the ends around till they overlap. And then you can see here, make sure you have that gap so the ends of the weave don't quite meet up. From there, what I'm going to do is just work on one end at a time. And I'm just going to separate out the two base wires. Because then what we need to do is make little loops with each of them. So I'm grabbing my round nose pliers here and we want the loops to be pretty small. So go close towards the tip of the pliers and just grab onto one at a time right after where they're coming out from the weave. Bring it around the pliers, make that loop so we get something a bit like that. Repeat the same with the other wire. So we have the two loops, then I can go in, cut off the excess and you just want to cut it right where the wire starts to meet up with itself, so basically overlap itself, but we still have a full circle and then we can just close up that little loop, cut off the other one and again just make sure to flatten that out. And then you just want to flip it around and repeat the same thing on the other end there. So separate out the wires, make a loop on either side and cut off the excess. So we then have the loops on either end meeting up right there in the middle and it's going to be kind of a little platform for our piece to sit on. So what I just want to do is connect these together because obviously it's still open. So just use the tails of the weaving wire and just come down through a loop, make sure to pull it nice and tight and then I'm going to come up through the one on the opposite side and then pull the two close together so the loops are sitting right next to each other there and come down through the first loop again. So I'm basically wrapping around the two wires that shape these two loops sitting next to each other and pull that tight and you can just wrap around again, make it a little bit stronger, come down and the two wraps there are going to be sitting right next to each other and just repeat the same with the other one. And then to finish off the wing wires just make sure to wrap around a single base wire a couple of times, cut off the excess, push down the end so it's not sticking out, do the same with the other end and now we have the ring band in place, it's time to make the piece that's going to sit on top of that little platform. And this is where I then grab the 0.4mm length that we cut off, in my case here it's copper and I'm doing that just so they contrast nicely with each other and it stands out more, but obviously that's completely up to you. 
And this is where I'm bringing out my six step bell making pliers and I'm gonna be using the third largest step on them and then grabbing the length of wire here. And I just wanna leave a short little tail. So I'll just leave about seven to 10 centimeters or so. And then place the pliers, bring the wire around and make a full circle, something like that. And then I wanna keep bringing it around. So we basically get the circle doubled up and have two wires laying on top of each other. And then from there, I'm gonna grab onto the circle and keep holding with my fingers and now I'm going to take the long end of the wire here and we need to wrap this around so this length here is coming from the top I'm going to bring it around the side of the circles remember to keep hold of them and then come up from the bottom and start to pull that tight but make sure that you pull it so it's going to sit right there before that tail starts to come out and that kind of fastens those circles in place so we have one wrap around the side with this long length of wire I'm going to come up through the circles again, just to make another wrap, make it a little bit more secure. Make sure it's nice and tight around the two circles there. And now what we wanna do is start actually making the pattern of the little spikes that are gonna come out as well and create that celestial look. So obviously that is also gonna be completely up to you how you want yours to look, but I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing. So I like to bring in a ruler just to make it a bit more precise. And I'm gonna be using millimeters here because obviously we don't want it to be too long. So I'm just gonna start with a short one. It doesn't really matter. Then I also need to grab my tweezers and those pliers so we can actually grab onto the wire and help create those spikes. Now for a short one what I'm going to do is measure four millimeters from where the wire is coming out from the circle here. So place it on that point and then I'm grabbing onto where those four millimeters end. So the length of this little gap that I have between the circle and my pliers is four millimeters. Then I'm bringing the wire underneath and back in the direction towards the circle and then while I have hold of the wire with my pliers I then bring the end of the wire up through the circle again just like we were doing before when we were wrapping it around. The only difference now is we have a little spike coming out that we want to make sure we keep the length of and then just encourage the wire to go back around the circles again to kind of fasten that little spike in place. So basically wrap it around right after the spike and then you can see we have another wrap technically but it's just sticking out a bit further. So that is a short one. And then I've also done another wrap after it. Then I'm going to do a couple more wraps to move on to the point where there's going to be the next spike. So again, come up through the circles. Wrap number two, once more, come up through so we can get wrap number three. So we're going to have three wraps between the spikes, which means I just need to do one more because this next one here will be the next spike. So we have the three wraps and now I'm ready to make the next spike here with this length of wire again. And this one I'm going to make a bit longer. So I'm going to be alternating between short and long. Like I said, how you want yours to look is completely up to you. But for this longer one, I'm then going to be using seven millimeters. So same principle, place the piece. So this wire that's coming out from the circle, right where it's coming out from the circle place it on seven millimeters and then grab onto where it hits zero with the pliers bring the wire underneath the pliers and then while you got hold of it bring the wire up through the circle and then just do that first wrap so this spike that we just made is going to stay in place because we don't want it to kind of get tighter or looser or anything while we continue working so that's the next spike and also one wrap after the spike. And it's the same principle. Do those wraps in between this and the next spike. We've done one, two, three. And then the next one is gonna be the wrap we're using for the next spike. And then, like I said before, the next one for me is gonna be a short one, which is gonna be the same length as the first one, which is four millimeter. So grab the ruler, place it, grab onto the wire, bring the wire around back of the pliers, straight up through the circles, and then just encourage it to do that first wrap to fasten this little spike in place. And that's the short one again. So as you can see the pattern here, do a few wraps, do a spike, do a few wraps, do a spike. And like I said, you can make yours look however you want to, whether that's the same length on all the spikes or even something completely different. And this is then what it looks like with all the spikes done. You can see we have the four long ones, even they separate across from each other and the same with the short ones right in between them. Now from here we just need to make the spikes a little bit sturdier so I'm gonna grab my pliers and then just with one spike at a time I'm gonna grab onto the very end where the wire is bent like that so just the very end there and then while holding on to the piece in the middle there I'm gonna start twisting 
the wire. So even though it's one length of wire, obviously because it's folded, it's technically two that we're twisting and it starts to straighten out and become more solid, something like that. And you basically want to go all the way around with one at a time and do the same thing. So the short one next, twist it a few times. And I personally like to count the times so I do it evenly on each one. So something like that. You can see it become a lot more defined as well. So just work your way all the way around. And then from here, what we're missing is adding our sparkle in the middle. So the rosemont tea is going to sit right on top of those circles. So to add that, I'm going to use the remaining I have of the weaving wire here. And then just start to bring it through one of the holes. Now the rosemont tea has four holes, as you can see on the back. You got that little cross. So just go through one first and let it drop down and then place it so it sits on top of the circles directly like that and come down through the circle again and then it's going to act as a stopper now i'm just going to go around the circle to help fasten it more in place and then what we need to do is work our way down so we can go through the other hole as well so i'm just wrapping around the circle working my way down and then i'm pulling it tight so it blends in with the wraps that are already in between the spikes and once you're there we can go through the other hole straight up to the other side and that's going to secure it much more in place and of course on the other side we just need to fasten that as well so again bring it around the circle pull it tight so the wire blends in with the other wraps and that's then the rosemont tea added when you're happy with how secure it is we can then use the remaining of these weaving wires to attach to the ring band and we already have those loops in place so all we need to do is take our weaving wires here and bring them down through the loops get it sitting right where we want and then what we need to do is use these weaving wires just use one at a time and go back and forth through the loops in the ring band and that celestial pat a few times by coming back up through a different loop for instance and make sure every time we do we pull it nice and tight and also that we make sure it sits how we want it to so in this case i'm making sure two long ones are sitting sideways and facing up and down straight but then otherwise you can again use the circles to then go back around as well and back down through the ring band and just pull that tight so again it blends in and just keep checking it's sitting how we want and basically just keep doing this until it's fastened nicely so using the other wire now again grab onto that circle so we make sure we have secure points in multiple places around so there's no loose parts pull it tight so it blends in and you can start to see the effect we're going to get so just keep doing this until you're happy with how secure it is and then once it's on there nice and securely we then just want to finish off the weaving wires here so i'm just going to wrap it around a single base wire anywhere you feel it's going to be securely finished off wrap it around cut off the excess and then just make sure to tuck the end away. Get it right in between all the wires there. So it's not going to catch or scratch on anything. And then just repeat with the other one. And then you have your ring finished and ready to wear. Now this ring would match lovely with some previous designs I've made with the same theme. So I'm going to leave a link to a playlist in the description box down below. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching it. And I'll see you in the next one.